So when the, you did go to a CLL specialist or when did you find the specialist to, to go to? He, um, basically when I was in the hospital and they were doing all the tests on me, my, um, consultant, Dr. Martinez Calais, he was my consultant from the get go. He was, he was the second consultant I saw. Um, and so that is literally who I had from the beginning. I can remember saying to him on the ward, are you going to look after me then? You know, cause I wanted to know who's going to be, um, you know, who was, who, who's going to be looking after me because I'd seen so many people over such a short period of time, different doctors. Uh, and I kept writing all their names down and all the nurses, um, trying to you know because you just I don't know it's just it's just a really you just want someone to be responsible for you and to know that they are you know if you've got a problem you know who's going to deal with it um so yeah so right from the get-go I had my consultant and um it's so good because we talk a lot about uh, you know whom you see uh especially with something like CLL if it's possible to see someone who specializes in it because yeah. then they've seen more cases. Maybe they know more about the, the treatments. Um, there's so much research going on with CLL, uh, dr- new drugs and combinations. So when he was talking to you, how did he describe your treatment options? Did he lay out different options or did he say, this is what I think you should do? There were two, there, were two, there was a flare drugs trial uh, that I could have done if I didn't have my particular deletion, or there was the abinituzumab and venetoclax. Now, venetoclax, or however you say it in America, was only FDA approved or approved about four or five years ago. Also with the prognosis, you know, if it was traditional chemotherapy that I would have had, then with my particular deletion, I think I would have had a worse prognosis. Also with these modern drugs, they haven't got all the 10 years to say, oh, well, so many people get to five years remission. They get, say, five years remission, 80% of people do. Um, So there there were options, um, but there weren't any options when I got my results back. I, I literally knew what I was going on. So you, um, in, in talking to, to him, um, it, it, did it feel like a conversation where he was laying out options and saying, you can just, you know, you can decide, or did it feel very much like this is, this, this is, is what it. I, this is it. Okay. Yeah, this is it. You, you either, you can have this if, um, you know, there are different choices if, uh, you don't have certain deletions, but if you do, then then this is the option that will go down. And I just wanted to know how effective it was, and um, you know what the results were, what the you know what you know what my life expectancy was like. You know, I was joking. Oh, you know, you're going to cure me. <laughs> will I? You know, will I last for twenty years? Um, and all that kind of stuff. What did he um, say to you? Well, you know what? He was, he is really good. He is really good. I mean, the thing is, I wanted answers like, am I going to, you know, live forever? And it's not curable, it's treatable. And that's, that's what I had to get my head around. And I was really, I was really scared that I wasn't going to last very long. Um, and yeah, but I mean, consultants are, they are how they are and they just say it how it is. And they, you know, just, you know, which I, I like, I like, I mean, he didn't have all the answers that I wanted because I want, <laughs> I want to live for a really, really long time and I don't want to have cancer. So that's, uh, yeah. But, but did he describe to you as an overview, look, CLL, it's, it's chronic, right? It's a chronic leukemia. And so this is something that isn't curable, but it's very treatable. Um, here's yeah. how people normally, this is the trajectory. Did he lay it out for you? Like you'll do a benetuzumab and venetoclax after you do this, here's the plan after. I was asking what the plan was and why couldn't I have, you know, the um, transplant straight away. So he was saying, well, this is what we would do. We'd do, yeah, he, he went over it. Venetus Pax, Venetuzumab. And then when it comes back again, then you can do this. Or if that doesn't work, well, then we can do that. Um, and when I was allergic to binituzumab, you know, um, they thought they were going to switch me on to an older drug, uh, which they didn't, you know, um, I can't remember the name of it. Was it rituximab? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, but then they got it, 
you know, I had antihistamine infusion and uh, steroids and all sorts before I'd have my infusion. So I was okay. So we didn't have to swap, but you know, yeah, they, he explained it. Then let's talk about the actual treatment. So about, uh, this is in uh, August, so about two months after the diagnosis, roughly a little less than you start the treatment. What did that look like in terms of how often you were going in, um, you know, the infusion, how long it took and, uh, and then we'll cover side effects. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the beginning, I was on a binituzumab for, um, from August until the end of December. That was it. So August, September, October, November, five months. And, um, it was quite close together in the beginning. I haven't got my timetable. I think it was weekly and then it went to further out, spread apart, um, to monthly um and the abinituzumab the first time I had it they do like a tester of three hours putting it into you and then after that literally it's about I was in about eight hours so it was a quite a long day um on the drip but you know I was really super organized so they used to laugh because I'd take a massive bag full of um you know I'd got all my food in there my drinks uh my mobile phone charger a book um, but I was always on on the phone the whole time I was in there. Um, so that was the abinituzumab and um, venetoclax. I started in August and you start on 100 milligrams for, um, say, I can't remember what it was for a period of time. And then they test your bloods and then they go 200 and then they ramp it up 300 and then they go again to 400. So I'm on 400 milligram uh, daily um, and they have to test your bloods because um venetoclax breaks down the cancer cells so quickly and then you literally wear it out so it can um you know damage your liver and and all the rest of it so yeah they keep a really close eye on your blood so I was in and out you know at the beginning when they were increasing it uh three times a week to have my bloods done yeah, which is a big impact on your life, of course, because you're having to go in for these checks all the time, blood tests. Um, but so the uh, abinituzumab was an infusion that was longer as they were testing your reaction to it. And then it got shorter, I imagine. And then also it wasn't weekly anymore. It was. Yeah. So it was it was um, the first time it was just a few hours. Then it went up to eight hours. So it was always a whole day. It was always a whole day of abinituzumab. Um, it was weekly and then it went to kind of monthly and then finished or, you know, it was, um, yeah, it wasn't too bad, to be honest, after they got the reaction, the allergic reaction under control. And that was through just antihistamines and they'd give you fluids and antihistamines before the open yeah. the mab, right? And steroids, intravenous steroids. Yeah. And that literally worked uh, like magic. Yeah. And did you start feeling any other side effects with the mab? Well, my whole body was kind of all swollen. And then, and then, um, you know, I felt like, you know, I felt like my um, throat was closing up. So that was pretty bad. That was really scary because it felt like I was being suffocated. Um, you know, so that was really horrible. But it was really the allergic reaction to the yeah. drug. And that was it. You didn't have a lot of fatigue or nausea or any of those kinds of things. Um. <sighs> Uh, you know what? I can't really, I feel more tired now at this stage than I did in the beginning. You know, I don't know whether, I think you're in complete shock because I went straight into treatment. So I was running at a hundred miles an hour at everything anyway. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't, I didn't really feel that tired. I felt tired when I first got diagnosed, but then once I started treatment, I wasn't, I wasn't as tired. Got it. Got it. And so with the venetoclax or venetoclax, <laughs> whichever yeah. way we say it, um, did you feel any, any side effects with, with that when you started taking it? Um, no, not, not, not at all in the beginning. I've got, I mean, at the moment I've got, I've had a sore throat for about eight weeks. I don't know whether that's that or just cause, um, you know, I'm a bit run down maybe I'm not really run down, but you know, because you don't really have much immune system, um, you kind of don't know whether it's the drugs or whether it's just me. So I am hearing that largely it, after the allergic reaction was taken care of, 
the treatment has been largely okay. Um, yeah. you are tired. It's gotten, you've gotten more tired throughout the course. Um, you stopped the obinutuzumab after the five months, and then you will still, uh, you're still wrapping up Veneta Clax for another, yeah. this is the last month, isn't it? So another few yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah. And then what did your doctor say in terms of, um, the, the protocol in, in following up? I, um, finish at the end of June and then my appointment back at the hospital is July the 12th. Um, so, I'll, and then I think I go to three monthly blood, so they'll keep a check on it then. Um, and I think, you know, and, and that will be it. I mean, hopefully I was 0.0045% when they did it out of 500,000, the bloods, and now they're going to do it out of a million when I go back. So it's, um, so they'll see, hopefully it'll have gone down because that was December, January, I had it done. And now we're going to be, it's going to be the end of June or July. So it's a lot further on. So I hope it'll be even lower than that. Um, and then I think it's literally just every three months. And then I'm going to be looking out for symptoms, aren't I? I think this is bringing up, you know, such a great point, which is you dealing with a chronic cancer like this, it's not like, oh my gosh, it's aggressive. We're going to do this treatment. And then hopefully you're in remission. This is, you, you get into remission and you hope to keep it down as long as possible for now. Yeah. Um, how, how are you approaching it uh, mentally, emotionally, just preparing yourself for really what they call, um, well, in this period, it's, it's, you know, they're just going to monitor you. I mean, I'll be honest, I've, because I've got this sore throat, I've got a, a biopsy in July on uh, my tonsils. So um, I don't know. I just think, oh, gosh, uh, in a weird way. I mean, I can't wait to party and celebrate. Uh, you know, when I when I um, finish my treatment, I'm going to see all my girlfriends. So that's going to be good. Um, you know, and uh, and then it's just living. I mean, hopefully I will um get a bit you know I mean I have got a lot of energy but hopefully once I've finished the drugs and it kind of comes out of my system a bit more then you know I know with Venita Clats it can build up so at the beginning it's like that and then towards the end it's it's gone up so I know that I'm almost there I'm almost finished so towards the end of my treatment and in August I'll probably be quite tired um, but then I hope that I'll get a boost of energy because I'll be off the drugs that I've been on for absolutely ages um, and even though I think, oh, it hasn't, you know, I've still been working out, I've still been working. I am, you know, I, I think, I hope that I'll have more, more energy. Um, and I hope that, um, I'll just live in the day. I tend to live in the day a lot. You know, I, I am really grateful in the morning, uh, and I live every day as if it's, um, not my last day, but I really appreciate everything. Um, so as long as I can do keep doing that on a daily basis I do appreciate everything you know everything means so much more when you've got cancer doesn't it you know um, all those special moments you know I used to cry before now I cry even more <laughs> so, I mean I always cry at things like new babies I can't help myself I love new babies um, but you know everything means so much more you know when the girls came out for a walk with us um, you know I said to them they said, oh, I bet this is the best day of your life, isn't it? And I said, you know what? Yeah, it is. Actually, yeah, it is. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's really good. And that's, that's, I don't want to think about uh, cancer. You know, I don't want to think about it. I don't want it to be, um, but I also, I need to get my neutrophils and everything back up. Um, and that's a long-term thing, isn't it? You know, with blood cancer, you have low immunity. So, Yeah. I, uh, I love it. I'm soaking up the energy <laughs> that you're, you're giving out, um, of, of gratitude. Mm -hmm. and I so appreciate that. Um, as we wrap up this conversation, um, first of all, you know, it is, um, you know, you are a young and a woman and, and that's not the yeah, typical CLL diagnosis, right? Usually it trends older, um, more male, um, so you're double lucky. No, um, so <laughs> <laughs> double special, double special. Yeah. Um, but so I think your story is going to help a lot of people who don't fit that category and, and can relate for you. Um, I guess any last thing you want to say about 
you know, having gone through all this and I know you're still in it, right? A lot of times we talk to people, they've already been through treatment. They're now on the surveillance part of it or, or they've been living with it for a while. This is all pretty fresh for yeah. you. You've, you, you're just in that moment of really still trying to figure it out. Right. Um, I think you've had to deal with this identity shift. You are yeah. go-getter competitive. You built up this work. I don't know, just your last guidance to people, um, on what you have figured out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and just how you look at moving forward now as someone who's living with essentially a chronic disease. Yeah. I, I just, uh, think live every day as if it is, you know, not your last, but enjoy everything, take every opportunity. And, um, you know, I always think, well, fake it to make it, you know, a lot of days, you know, you can just pretend you haven't got cancer and uh, forget about it. Um, And especially like you say, with a chronic disease, um, you know, I I just think just get on with life and live it. Um, It doesn't define me. Uh, I know it's taken over my life for like the last year, Um, but, uh, you know, there's so much more to life. That is one part of it. And uh, just go out there and grab everything and all the people you love, keep them close to you uh, and just live life. You just have to live your best life every day, don't you? I think. Thank you so much, Tamsin. I really appreciate you spending this time with us and sharing and Let's, let's obviously keep in touch so we can, you know, keep posted on your story. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) No more crying. (laughs) We appreciate your vulnerability. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and for yeah, everyone, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it, it is really impactful. Honestly, yeah. a lot of what yeah. we do is about showing people that, uh, there is power in being open and vulnerable because yeah. so many of us actually do share a lot of the same experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. And so thank you, my lovely. For, for everyone who wants to check out Tamsin's full story, just head to thepatientstory.com where you'll find human answers to your cancer questions. Mm-hmm.